singing is not cancelled. Faith Insights Spotlight on Faith, the show that looks at how our faith can inspire us to make a difference in the world. And these episodes, we put the spotlight on wonderful artists who are making great music, but also using their talent to make positive change in the world. And today I'm very excited to be joined by a very special guest. You could yeah. say a woman, a woman on a mission, uh, to call her album title, <laughs> who viewers of The Voice will be, be very familiar with. Incredible singer, a real powerhouse. That's Michelle John, as well as being a finalist on The Voice. She's performed with many of the greats, too many to mention. <laughs> and Lennox, Mariah Carey, you name it, they're all there, Ed Sheeran. They're all there. <laughs> and she's even performed for President Barack Obama in the White House, which we'll touch on. Nice. As well as using her music to entertain, she's been using her music to highlight very important issues around domestic abuse and empowering women to speak out and fortunately around COVID-19 this is becoming an even bigger issue which is yeah the news so welcome welcome Michelle I'm so thrilled yes to thank you for having me this is cool isn't it it's very this cool is a good way to spend uh, spend some uh, quarantine time <laughs> <laughs> absolutely I, I, I would stay in quarantine for another year if I could if I could do this every week well, you know, I've I've done I've done I don't know about you guys, but I've done some painting. I've wow. made banana bread. <laughs> I've organised the spare room. So <laughs> thank you for this welcome distraction. <laughs> <laughs> so this is taking you away from 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 other yeah. things in the house that need done. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm going to be taking you back to your early early stages in music. Wow. Uh, and then coming you up, bring up to date. So I've, I've been doing a little bit of reading in Michelle John, which has been fascinating. Um, so tell me everything you read. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing bad in what I've read. <laughs> I was looking around, but I couldn't find anything. Um, so if we take take you back to your earliest memories of singing, yeah. when did you first start to sing? Is it something that comes from your family? Um, that's a, that's a really funny question because the only person that I heard singing as a child was my grandma. Oh, wow. And um, my, 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 my grandma's a beautiful Caribbean lady right. and she sings mostly when she's cooking. Oh, wow. When she's cooking, she's always humming something. Right, right. And uh, generally, the one that I always remember her singing is, Then sings my soul. Oh, wow. I say. And my nan, my nan has a very high voice. Right, right, right. Oh. So I, I've got a, a soprano voice myself. So I think mm -hmm. my nanny is to blame for. <laughs> yeah, for actually, I, uh, when we go into the voice later, I seem to remember a lot of people talking about you hitting some particular high high notes. Note, high note. Yeah, come from you, from you, from That's your all from my nan. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. That's my musical, my earliest musical influence, I would say. And then, obviously, you, you went into gospel at quite an early age. So when did you start singing in gospel choirs? Well, I grew up, I grew up in the church. And so from the age of about four years old, wow. I used to get picked up by the Sunday school van. Right. And... Um, there was a lovely gentleman. I grew up on a on a on a council estate in South London, in Peckham, which is Del Boy. Anybody who's a Only Fools and Horses fan, yeah. Del Boy country, and um, and so there was this lovely gentleman who was a churchgoer. And what he did is he basically went around to all the single mums and said, "I'd love to take your your children off your hands on a Sunday morning and bring them back in the afternoon for a few hours and take them to Sunday school." My mum was like, great, what time are you picking them up? <laughs> so lots of the kids on the estate, right. we went off to Sunday school on a Sunday. Wow. And Sunday school was fun because we did lots of fun activities. But for me, what I loved about going to church was the music. Mm. And I just was one of those babies that I would hear music and I would just be like, singing along to adverts and I was that child so the music really hooked me in really early on and I did my first solo 
just before I was five. Wow. Yeah, wow. so I think it was like a, a somebody was leave. I remember somebody was leaving to go back to Jamaica, and they had like this party, this send off, and I went up and sang. I don't remember what I sang, but um, yeah, I went up and sang a little a little something, and that was like <laughs> my and, first. And you were did, did you know that? Did you? I guess you were very young then, but did I'm you have so a young. I don't know. I just knew that I loved singing. That's all I knew, and it was something that kept me. It was just something I just couldn't help myself. Yeah. You know, when you have that, you just have it, you know, it's yeah. just in you. And yeah. uh, I never went to, you know, I never went to singing lessons or, wow. you know, it was all self-taught. It was all Sunday morning, the organist would start and whoever was leading devotion would, you know, I loved all the hymns. I knew them all. And then later on, I, I probably joined the choir when I was about, six or seven that was my first wow. children's choir and um then when i was 13 my church organization they mm. we had about 30 churches all around the uk mm. and they would have like an annual conference where everyone would come together and so they'd have a youth choir right. and so i joined the youth choir when i was 13 and so that's when it really got good and it got serious and then it was like all these beautiful gospel harmonies and you know you had the gown and it was like oh happy day oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel sad i didn't have an opportunity in scotland for those kind of gospel choirs Man. Uh, and uh, we three kings i think was just so <laughs> <laughs> very young, very young. Three kings yeah, <laughs> Yeah, nothing is 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 as great as um, the gospel music. It's so yes, it's, it's just so it just it just does something to you. I mean, it's just yeah. the your spirit just goes whoa. You know? <laughs> and so you you were in the was it London gospel community, community. choir for you for like a little yes. Years. Yeah, That's I was I was actually singing. I was singing with a group. I used to be in a in a group back in the day, a gospel group. Right. And I was singing at this concert and I remember Basil Mead and LCGC were there that night mm. and they were like the headliners, you know, because mm. back in the day there was like a TV program called the Rock Gospel Show. Okay, yeah, I remember. That. And uh, there was another program called People Get Ready. So like, yeah. it was on, I think every Sunday mm. evening. So for me, they were like celebrities. I, I saw them, you know, on TV. Sure. And um, after that concert, I sang with my group and Basil came over and he said, look, you know, I'd love you to come and join my choir. And I was like, oh my God, I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> so Basil, me poached me. He poached me from my group. <laughs> and, and the, so did, did you only do gospel for the 11 years that you were in the choir? Or did, did, did you well, do what anything? happened was... Did you do anything else? Well, one, one of the things that LCGC is known for, the London Community Gospel Choir, mm. is for um, backing lots of secular artists. Mm. And so that was really my introduction ah, into okay. the circular world. So, for example, um, if you guys know that song, I want to know what love is, I want you to show me, massive anthem. Mm. And so that's LCGC on that on that on that song wow, i did not know that wow yes and um so then they did lots of other songs with groups like madness and uh we we worked with shirley bassey and we did um wow. i think with um tom jones and so we just did so many different concerts wow. and there would be you know nights at the royal abbott hall and uh you know we would back sting or something like that so that wow. was really yeah it was really epic fantastic memories just wonderful times and then obviously the choir just traveled around the world just doing right. gospel concerts so, um all around the world it was so, awesome. so so perhaps there, there was never that um difficulty then between gospel transitioning into no. thank you on music because i know no. some of artists have that issue yeah and I think at that time, like the, the ethos of LCGC was about taking the gospel to the world. And so taking it out of the church and 
you know, bringing this light to the world. Right. And so I think that's where I developed that, um, that, that desire in myself to do that with, with my own music. Right. And um, do you know what I mean? So you never had people in your church saying, Michelle, you should stick to Absolutely. Sing, gospel, praise music. What, what are you doing singing music? Absolutely. I still, I still get it now. I still get that now, Ian. Seriously? I still get it now. I do. And my answer to that is my personal, where I stand with this, is that I believe that I'm supposed to take the light out into the world. And so even the music I sing, I like whatever I do, I want it to have, I want to bring joy. I want to represent hope. I want to represent possibilities because of the things, the things that I've done. Yeah. For a regular girl from Peckham on the council estate, that these things don't, ha don't happen. But for some reason, God entrusted these experiences to me. And so I want to represent for women that have gone through some of the challenges I've come through, young people, you know, that have brought up single parents, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of in a very, you know, challenging place in society, yeah, yeah. you know, where you don't have the support, you don't have the financial yeah, um, yeah. freedom. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. And all of those kinds, of, all the struggles that come with that. So I want to represent possibilities. So I don't want to be stuck into the four walls of the church yeah. because we, we come to church and we get, we get fed and we get encouraged and we go home. And there's so many people that need what we get every Sunday. So why can't we take it out and, and be, you know, almost be like a food bank. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? So many people want to put you in that little box, but yeah, it's what we, I was reading another interview you were talking about. It's, it's setting an example to others. It's, it's not just about wearing a badge saying I'm a Christian. It's about how you live your yes. life, how you, yes. how you live your values. And exactly. You can teach so much through music without being overtly, you know, this is a Christian praise song, but Yes. Promote love and peace, reconciliation, all sorts of things through music. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sure I would I would challenge like there, there, there was some there was some song that might not necessarily be a Christian song that has encouraged us at some point in our in our life, at some point in our journey. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I was thinking like recently um, when Bill Withers passed away, songs like Lean on Me. Lean on me. I mean, I mean that's just you know that's what that's what we should do as christians we should be people should be able to lean on right absolutely Simple. absolutely <laughs> so i know you've performed with some of the greats here's a hard question but when you were growing up who, who were the the real artists who inspired you who, who were the people that you looked up to and thought wow I <gasps> like them or... well one of the first and I, I i said this to someone the other day like one of the first albums that I ever bought with my pocket money was an album by Luther Vandross. Yeah, yeah. And as far as singers go, mm -hmm. I mean he's a real he's a real art, you know, he the yeah. way he sings it's just an art form. Yeah. yeah. So he's he the tone of his voice mm -hmm. just always just made me want to practice. <laughs> It's so smooth, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. rich, smooth, so controlled and just believable as well, you know. <clears throat> so that was one of the first uh, records I bought. So when I later on got to work with him. Wow, you got to work with Luther Van Dross. I got to work with Luther Van Dross and um, I did a concert with him at, uh, one of the shows I did with him was at the Royal Albert Hall. Wow. And that night, the special guest was Mariah Carey. So we, we did a couple of Mariah. So, so it was pretty epic. Yeah. Um, so Luther's always been one of my favorites. And then I loved Whitney Houston growing yeah. up because, yeah. again, she was the big voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so I got to work with her many wow. years ago. And um, I don't know if some of you might remember a program called Top of the Pops. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I, I remember that, yeah. Okay. 
so Whitney came over to do Top of the Pops. Right. And uh, I got hired as a backing singer oh, wow. to back her just for that one which, performance. Which, which team was that? What, what? Well, this was now, an, an, uh, the song that I did was, but it's my breath. But it's okay, I'm gonna make it. So I think that album came out like maybe 96, 98. It's all right, it's all right but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, um, I mean, for me, that was just like, wow, that's that's, that was a real childhood hero. Wow, it's epic. And it, yeah. there's, it's funny, there's actually a, um, a football commentator here, believe it or not, who also does, he used to do Channel 4 program, Stuart Cosgrove. I remember okay. him uh, talking recently uh, about, he was doing some interviews for some magazine he was doing, and this was, he met Whitney Houston when I think she was 12, something like that, because he was That's interviewing, he was interviewing her mother, because right. a very yes. famous gospel artist. Yes. Uh, and then this little girl came in who, who was serving the tea and, and everything, and he, he got a chance to listen to her singing, but this, this girl's going Sissy, Sissy Houston. Sissy Houston, yeah. Yes. Wow. So and I, I know I know even at that age she had a phenomenal voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well all the all the best artists really start in gospel, don't they? So many of them, <laughs> so many of them do. The coach, I think the, the, the choirs give them that. Yes. So, so who who's still on your bucket list then? Is there anyone left that you haven't? <laughs> oh, on my bucket list. In terms um, of singers, I mean, you've got Mariah Carey, who's, who's left? I would love to, I would love to sing a duet with Tina Turner. Oh, wow. wow. And the reason why is, again, because of, we've had very similar journeys. Mm. And so it would just be a real moment for me because, you know, even just some of the things that she's in, she came through mm. and, uh, you know she just pressed through and rebuilt her life and mm. you know i just had that passion for her her journey just, it, it, and we'll touch on this again later when we talk about your music but it just actually came into my mind when you when you were talking about that that uh tina turner does a song and i think it was written by lulu a scottish singer called uh we don't really want to fight no more and yes I think, I think that song is a little bit about it might well be about it makes me think about her relationship with Ike Turner and, yes. and what she'd yeah. been through. That's maybe why she connected, I think, with that song. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, so, we've, we've touched on <laughs> so many great artists. That, uh, so, at what point did you did, 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 did you get to the point of going to, towards the voice? So you were, still, were you still in the, the, the community choir when, when the voice audition came up? No, left. no I wasn't. I'd... I'd I left um, the community choir, I think, in 2000 or 2001. Right. So it's quite some time ago. But I've still, I still have a relationship with the choir. I still right. have a wonderful friendship so, with Basil. So, so you were working more like a professional backing yes. singer. You were doing a lot At of that time, work. the main person I, I was working with was Eric Clapton. Right. right. And uh, so I, I left the choir, and then I went on to work with. Um, Will Young. Okay. And so I, 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 I worked with Will over the last, well, 16 years or so. Wow. And uh, I worked a, a, a lot with, so my main kind of people were Will, and then I worked with Annie Lennox as well mm -hmm. during that time. It was just so incredible because as it was almost like once Will Young's tour finished, then Annie's tour started. So I just right. went from one, camp to the so other. Doing, you were doing that for how many years? Well I for before a, the voice came up. At least at least 15 years, 15 wow. or so years. I was with Eric Clapton for almost 15 years. That's a long time though to be behind the mic and then obviously yeah. decide to go for the voice. Because I I know a lot of um, backing singers who are they, they, I, I would call them I don't know they they're, they're professional recording at their they, they they really know how to do backing vocals and record them. Yes. Because it is a it's a skill. I'm quite, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quite rubbish sometimes at certain notes <laughs> that people want to add in a in a recording studio. But some artists are fantastic at that. But put yeah. them on stage on their own. Yeah. To leave the concert, they freeze. They don't. I they, know. So how I did know. you? Uh, it's a big, it's a big transition. Yeah. 
it, because you're switching your mind to you're not accompanying now you have to lead something uh-huh uh-huh yeah and um but i'd sung the lead so many times in you right. know in the choir and but you don't have the people behind you. you don't have all the, you don't have the all the people behind you in the choir you have you have all, all yes these exactly so you still have a, a massive support system so people when i went on the voice people said to me well this sh would be easy for you because you've been on stage for you know 20 something years and i and that's exactly what they what uh, i think a lot of people didn't understand was that oh no 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 I, i'm used to being back here <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah with it. another with another another backing singer yeah. you know and we're, we're coordinated and we're, we you know we're working as a team yeah now yeah. i'm i'm in the front going okay <laughs> can, I, can i tell you when i when i, I used to have a, a group that i was in when the music stopped i froze so I, I would like the guitarist to speak and do all the bits in between right so it, it's different some for some people when, you, when you're in the in the song you you you're someone else yes but, but when you have to open your soul on that bit when it's yes and then so, you have to engage with the audience and and, and you have to speak that was yes. the most difficult thing for me wow. and i found that difficult because i wasn't used to it of course i understand yeah. and uh, so it's taken me a little while and I'm, I'm still i'm still getting there ian i still got a little way to go i think i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so we'll touch on that later because i know other ways you're engaging with people it doesn't show you, you, very, you're very humble speaking to people. I'm getting there. I'm, so, I'm getting there. So, so talk us through that. So, did you put in the application to the voice, or did someone else encourage you to do it or do it for you? No, it was just one of those weird things. You could call it coincidence. You could call it God. I don't yeah. know. Whatever yeah. you want to call it. So, what happened was I. I'm a vocal coach yeah. and uh, I had a, a, a student that I was working with and I had encouraged my student to perform at, mm -hmm. an, at a, uh, it was a singer's night, it was like an open mm -hmm. mic night kind of thing and I knew the people that were hosting the night and so I'd been working with this singer preparing them for this night so I went along to support my student and the people that were hosting the night were like well there's no way we can have you here and you not sing. So I went up and I said to them, well, I've not prepared anything. So I said to the guys, they had a full band. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let's just make up, well, let's just do a blues. Right, right, right. And let's just do like a 12 bar blues. And I just made it up as I went along. And, um, you know, people enjoyed it, it was fun. And then when I came off the stage, a, a couple of people came up to me and they said, look, we're actually scouts for The Voice. Wow, right. And, you know, we want you to, we really want you to do the show. And I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. And I just, I always had this thing with, reality shows and i was like no way this is I'm, I'm not going down that road this is not for me and um they kept asking me every year for three years and so on the fourth year i made the mistake and i was like you know what lord if this comes back i'll do it because at that point something had shifted in me where i felt now that i was ready to sing my own song so I'd been doing, you know, Eric Clapton, Annie Lennox, Joss Stone, Will Young, all of these wonderful people. And I just got to a point in my, in my mind, in my spirit, where I knew it was time for me to shift. And so the voice came back and I thought, this is going to be, I'm going to use this as my declaration to myself, first and foremost, to say, I'm ready to be what I believe God has called me to be. That's the first thing. And then I'm going to use this platform that, hey, if I get if I get a chair turn, what a fantastic endorsement. You know, it doesn't hurt to have someone like Will I Am or Tom Jones say, you know, you have something. <laughs> 
because I think I still needed that affirmation at that time. Wow. Can, am I good enough? Can I do this? Can Despite I? Despite the fact that you've worked with all these artists, you must have. Yeah, but I don't. Really, again, I'd still. I've been the backing singer. Can I? Can I come to the front? Can I hold it? Can I hold the responsibility? Can I? Can I create a moment? So, can I? So, at what point? At what point did you lose that and you you started to believe? Was it when all the chairs turned, or <laughs> was was it a defining moment when? You had some note and everybody, you know, the, the I think I, I think it started in me first. Right. Something I believed that I could do it. I think if you, I think that's the main thing, like with anything, I think you have to believe in yourself mm. that you can, that you can do it. You might not get it perfect. You know, there's always room for growth and improvement, but can I, can I show up? Can I do this song? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I've sung it. I've sung it amazingly in the shower. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. So, do was, there a, was there a point where you thought you started to believe that I, I might win this show? Or do you know what? I never allowed myself to go yeah. there. Okay. So I just always had in my mind that, as far as I get, yeah. I'm just going to pick up and run from there. That's all. That's all. That was all I was thinking. Brilliant. And so the the more you know, the, the, the further up the process I went, I was thinking, oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't quite expect this. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of things going on. You know, I wasn't the, the, the public's favourite person. There was people that were getting more votes than me. And, but for some reason, the, the public kept putting me through, like, week after week. And I wasn't the bookie's favourite, like a lot of the contestants were focused on the bookie's favourite is this person and that, and that kept changing and I just thought I don't want to get caught up in any of that, I just want to go out, sing my best song and you know hopefully have a nice outfit on and I just represent myself as best as I could. Which you did, which you did, you know I think, I think it took a lot of people went to people's hearts. And yeah. I still remember to, it, I, just, I can't believe it was 2017. It feels like it, it was I know. The last year that, I know, it's gone so that, quickly. that happened. So from the voice, when, when did the, the, the Obama thing happen that you were asked to come and sing? The Obama thing happened what? a couple of years before I, I did yeah. the voice. Right. And what happened was um, President Obama would do like a, a series of concerts at the White right. House. Okay. And he, he would do um, a Christmas concert every year. Right, wow. And this particular year, he invited Annie Lennox to be a special guest, and I was, I was Annie's backing singer. Okay. Okay. And so on that year, we had Annie Lennox, Mariah Carey. Uh, there was a gentleman from this program called Glee. Oh, yeah, I remember Glee. Remember Glee. He was a fabulous singer, um, this beautiful tennis singer mm. and uh yeah and so wow. there we were in the white house having that's lunch it's great let's go from Beckham, as you say <laughs> I know. I know. it's crazy i mean i've i've been i've been to buckingham palace i've sung in buckingham palace i mean so what, what's the highlight from all of these things what would you do would you choose one highlight from oh that's impossible it's impossible um Oh, I just <laughs> too many. there's just too many um, amazing things. Um, oh, I just I, I, do you know what? What one of the things I think was incredible was um, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2014, might have been earlier, maybe 2012. The Queen had her Jubilee, it was the Queen's Jubilee, and they had a massive concert. And um, they had an open air concert on Pall Mall, just outside oh. the palace. And they set up oh. a stage right outside the palace. And there were, I think there was over a million people on Pall Mall that day for the concert. And obviously millions of people watched it on TV. And I got to sing, I was singing backing vocals and I sang for Shirley Bassey oh. and Tom Jones, Paul McCartney uh kylie minogue was on the show robbie williams was right. on the show i mean that that was epic wow that was an epic epic experience so that that's up there 
And yeah. then afterwards, they had the after party in the palace. Wow. That was pretty epic. <laughs> there, weren't, there weren't goodie bags in that one, were there? There weren't any goodie bags. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I do have a confession. Pray for me, guys. Please pray for me. What did but you um, I went to the palace. I went to a palace another time and we performed. Uh, I performed with Eric Clapton. Mm -hmm. And in the, the room, they had these bottles of water, but they were in the royal, these royal <laughs> water. <laughs> and on the bottle, it has like a crest of, you know, the palace. Oh. And I, I mean, one ended up in my bag. <laughs> I, I, I think you can be forgiven for that. It was, as long as it wasn't the royal silverware or anything. <laughs> no silverware. I, I couldn't take the risk. There's too many det um, metal detectors. <laughs> but I do have a royal bottle of water. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Pre preserved and unopened in the <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're talking career and highlights. I think I think the other thing is bringing it to some of the other really important um, work that you're known for. Yeah. Um, so as well as reaching you know thousands of people through your through music, uh, it's the, the real work that you're doing around you know raising the the issue of domestic abuse. Yes. And how you know trying to help empower women to yeah to speak out against it. I was reading a beautiful quote from you I think yesterday. Nothing is more powerful than a woman unafraid to be herself. Woo! I thought that was very strong, and I thought that kind of comes. A, uh, I, th I think of I think of Michelle John when I read that quote, and a lot of things that I, I, wow. see, I see you I see you talking about online and engaging with people. Yeah. Um, and then I know you went on to 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 record the the song um, Priceless. Yes. Um, and I was really thinking about Priceless that. Because that, that is connecting to some of your own personal experiences. Yeah. Uh, I just wondered how hard it was for you to to kind of lay your, your heart on your sleeve and, and actually if there was some kind of healing process through the finish of that song or, or, or through kind of producing that. Um, what happens with that song, it was one of those things. Do you write do you write songs, Ian, as yeah. well? I yeah. write songs for other artists as well. Yeah. Right. So you know sometimes you might get an idea of something yeah and then you might have to you get an like a verse or a chorus yeah and then you might come back to it yeah. this was not that experience i literally i i don't know if i dreamt it but i literally woke up in the morning i reached for my phone and i went to my voice memos and i just started to um priceless and i had the whole song the verses everything wow and then I, I, I always do that. If I get an idea, I go. For, I, I always make a voice, a voice note of things, and and then I go do back. You, do you play piano or guitar? Just, or just, you just a little bit. I just play enough okay. to to teach and just to work things out. Right. But right. I'm not a fluent okay. player. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. And um, uh, so literally, I just got the whole thing. And then I sent it to one of my closest friends and I just said, this this song, I just got this song, what do you think? And he was like, oh my gosh, you have to record that. And so I wasn't, it wasn't that I made the decision to sit down and write the song, it just came. And I think it came because I had been consciously doing some, some stuff, some work on myself mm. where I was like, I don't want this thing to keep to define me. I don't want this experience that I went through to now be where I stop. Okay. Did you see what I mean? I understand. And um, so I think because I had been praying about it mm. and you know just talking about it and just going through my own healing, I think that's the song came. And then when I realised that I was going to put it out, I had to, I felt it was the right thing to speak to my son. Okay. Because my son, I mean, he's 21 now. Okay. But at the time he was, you know, in his, he was a late teenager. And I just mm. thought, it, it, whatever I do, especially 
you know these things we do on social media it has an impact not just on us but you know on our families and people that we love and so I spoke to him about it and he just was like he just said well mum this is it's your story and I think you know it will benefit you mm. to share it and maybe it might benefit someone else and that just was like that just released me you know and um so then I, I I knew that I needed to I needed to put it out there, and one of the things that it has done is yeah it, it, I get healing from it all the time. Wow. Sometimes I I think I'm I'm good, I'm over it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then I might I might sing it and then it just triggers up yeah. not not pain I don't feel pain but. What I feel now is, wow, look how far yeah. I've come. But like, I feel like I have to go back when I sing that song. It takes me back, but I'm not there. I've come so far. Mm. And that's why I was saying that I want my music, especially the music that I write, mm. to be hopeful. And it's, it's testimonial. It's about yeah. life. It's Absolutely. not, I don't, God hasn't given me songs that are like, Viva style. I don't, I've not written those songs. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I totally. They're not praise and worship. My no, songs yeah. are not, they're not gospel in their style. They're, but, they're but, but it's, it's about real life. It's about real life. Yeah. You know, often pe people used to ask me on radio, especially when I, in countries like Rwanda when I was on radio TV, what advice do you have for, for young artists? And I always used to say, stop trying to be like Chris Brown. And, 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 and writing, about being, writing about being in a nightclub, and, and it was all yeah. kind of generic stuff. Talk about it. Be, be authentic. Be yourself. Be authentic. Be yourself. You know, um, and somebody will connect to it. Um, and I get, I get, I, I get shocked. You know, just about how many people have connected to. Project. I just want to ask you that the kind of feedback that women have given you from that. So. You know something, in I get feedback from men and women. Great. Men and women. And you know, unfortunately, there's a there's an awful lot of men that have gone through abusive, mm. you know, situations, abusive relationships. Um, but yes, the, the people that it reaches, um, I've, I've had feedback from. Um, so I, I got feedback from a teenage teenage girl. Mm. I think she was about fifteen or sixteen, and she just said that when her mum listens to the song, she sees a change in her yes. mum's demeanour. And I just thought, ah, then that was, then that's what it was for. Absolutely, it's worth it. And I really believe, and I know sometimes this is hard, depending on where you are in your process, there's a scripture that says it was good that I was afflicted, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't fun going through what I went through, mm -hmm. but now I feel that the things I'm doing has turned it into good. So I can say, out of that affliction has come this goodness. That's and that's, that's kind of what I, that's what I try to do. That's a great philosophy. And obviously you've worked on another song, Stronger as well, um, yeah. which again recently has just come out, isn't it? Yeah, that song I got, I, I was asked to be a part of, and that is, um, it was a project put on by a charity called the Starfish, project and it's uh they're run by um a charity called bead house which mm -hmm. are in they're in south london so they're very close to where i grew up actually and uh, they're, they're working in conjunction with women's aid and what, what happened was they have with the charity they work with a number of women who are um survivors of um domestic abuse and uh, I don't like the word victim, survivors of, of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. Um, domestic abuse. And um, so what we did, there was a couple of us, I think there was about five or six, we, we, we gave some vocal coaching to these ladies wow. and uh, just helped to really build their confidence. And they sang the song. We worked with them, they sang the song. I'm, I've got a little bit in the song as well. And so the song is out, you can check it out. I think it's on iTunes mm. and all the usual platforms and it's called Stronger and it's, and it's a, a cover of a, of a Britney Spears song. Mm. And just, this, just the lyric is just about 
just I'm stronger than I was. Yeah. You know, this thing that's happened to me, I've made a decision that it's not going to break me, but it's going to be the, the remaking, the building of me. And uh, the video, there's a video, it's out on YouTube. And uh, it's an animated video because we had to protect the... Um, yeah, the survivors. You know, yes, we had to protect their identity. So please check it out. And if, if your viewers can support that, that would be wonderful. Of course. It's, it's been fantastic talking to you. So Yay! Just before we, we go, um, you were talking earlier that um, you find a little bit, or you did find it shy to come from behind the mic to in front of the mic. <laughs> but... I, I'm seeing a lot of you on, on, on social media through things like Mish Power Hour. Hey! Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm fucking everything here. So, so doesn't that give you, you, you come across as someone very confident there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I've grown. I've grown. I've, I've definitely grown in leaps and bounds. And it's funny because the Mish Power Hour was a result of me sharing the fact that I'd gone through domestic abuse oh. on The Voice. Okay. In fact, they, I never told anyone, they found out. Right. And, they, and it came out and it was in the papers and all this stuff. And what happened, it was actually a blessing in disguise because so many people reached out to me, thousands. Wow. And because of that, I decided when I came out of the show, I was gonna do a live, Facebook Live, just one, just to specifically to talk about it and just to share and just, I just wanted to, again, just to say to people, I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor and I've gone on to do, you know, I've, I'm building myself and I'm doing these things and you can too, basically, that was the mm. message. And um, because so many people spoke to me on the Facebook Live and I got so many messages, I thought, well, I'm going to do this again. And so then I decided to call it something. And it's the, the Mish Power Hour. <laughs> and because when I did The Voice, they, there was a hashtag, which was Mish Power, because I got a, a, a oh, cool. powerful right. voice. So then it became Mish Power Hour. <laughs> so it was just an accident. Or it was... It, it, it feels like it's a kind of a, a, a agony, a anti... A... Yeah. And a lot of people go on and they, they yeah. And you and, and yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a I think what I like about it is it, it isn't me just going, you need to do this and you need to do that. Mm. What I think is wonderful is it's a conversation. And so like we we spoke one day about confidence and somebody said, mm. Well, this is what's helped me. And so it helps everyone. Do you know what I mean? That's great. So yeah. And I think, again, like people feel like they're being seen and they're being heard. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. So, so check, check that out on there. Uh, Monday night. Monday night. 9.30 p.m. 9.30. <laughs> yeah, I was remember, trying to remember that. So tell me, what's next for Michelle John then? What's next for you? Right, so you know I've got my album. I've, I've done an album. I've recorded my album. We've got everything. All the pieces are together now. Um, the album's called Woman on a Mission. Um, what a title, it just, it just seems to resonate with you so much, yeah, it's great. I know, and so there is a track on the album called Woman on a Mission as well, good, good. And, um, and so before Covid, there was, a, uh, there was a plan formulated in terms of releasing the album and, and visual, you know, video and all of that mm, stuff, mm. so I'm, I'm connecting with a few people during this time and just putting the plan together so please like pray for that Absolutely. and uh, I have another project that's going to come out which will, which will possibly might even come out during this lockdown okay. Okay. Um, but I don't want to say too much about that at this point Ian but just look out for it and I will I will let you know it, very exciting. Um, it is exciting yes and have you and, plans to tour with this album when it's COVID-19 100 percent right one hundred, which is why I have to make sure that you know I get some radio help and some promotional help because you have to do it. Of course, right? of course. And I need course. obviously people watching this interview. Mm -hmm. I need you guys to get behind and support. Please, Absolutely. it doesn't happen without the support of the people. No. And for anybody in ministry, you know we all we're all called to different things, but we just can't minister 
without your help. No, so, no, no. So make sure your radio stations are playing. Fine. Make sure yeah. your radio stations are playing, Michelle, John, and, and request. Yes. Request, ask them why they're not. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, the final question I'm just going to ask you is, is there any message that you have that you want to share with anyone, anyone who's watching? Well, I think what I'd like to say is that you are enough. And that's one of the things that I've probably struggled with most in my journey is whether I'm, I'm good enough. And, um, you know, sometimes stuff happens that will kind of make you question that. And I want you to know that you are, you are good enough. And, um, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. That's one thing I've, I've learned. God doesn't make mistakes. And regardless whether or not you think you were a mistake or not, God doesn't make mistakes. So take the time to, to find yourself and who God's called you and created you to be. And just know that he doesn't make mistakes. So you're good enough. So just fall into who you are. And I think that that is that is important, not trying to be what maybe people expect you to be or, you know, people say, oh, you're good at you're good at blah, blah, Ian. You should do that. Where really your your passion is to play guitar. So if that's who you who you believe you are and that's always on your mind, it's on your heart, then then do that. Be that. So, yeah. So John, you inspiring i'm sure so many people have got such inspiration and hope from from watching you here i know i have it's been a real pleasure thank you thank you so much all right i haven't sang for a couple of weeks but here we go oh yeah oh. come on it's time to lift our heads up